Hi, it's Alex. Today I want to talk about the inclusion or exclusion of asexual people and other people on the ace spectrum in the LGBTQ community. This is a subject that I have seen discussed a lot, especially on Tumblr. And honestly, I, I have trouble understanding how passionate people get about this issue, but I still have my own personal thoughts about it. And I want to talk about what those are. Basically, I hear a lot of people advocating for excluding asexual people from the LGBTQ community. And they're not specifically trying to exclude all asexual people, so much as exclude what they call a, a cishet asexual people. So people who identify as asexual, but heteroromantic and cis, so they're not trans. And there's some argument, like, is someone really cishet if they're asexual? I'm not really going to get into that. I want to talk about some other, other ways of thinking about this that guide how I approach the issue. First of all, I'm very uncomfortable with any sort of exclusion when it comes to LGBTQ spaces. And the reason is very simple. The reason is closeted people and people who are in the process of questioning and figuring out their sexuality or their gender identity. And I was one of these people for some time, especially in the process of figuring out my gender identity. If you have an LGBTQ space that explicitly says such and such type of people are not allowed to come into this space, a lot of people out there might actually be gay or trans or something else that would make them be included under that umbrella, but they're thinking in the moment, oh, I'm just a straight cis person, whatever. And maybe they're not sure, or maybe they really do think that they're straight and cis, but they just support gay rights, or they support trans rights, and so on. And I've known a number of people who kind of went through a phase of feeling this way about themselves. I think the people who experience this are often those who are most vulnerable to homophobia and transphobia, because they have this internalized homophobia that makes it so that they, they can't, can't realize, can't admit to themselves what they really are. So if you go around excluding any types of people from your LGBTQ spaces, you're probably going to keep out the people who are most in need of those spaces, so that they can help get comfortable with themselves and their own identity, their sexuality, their gender identity. So that's the first reason I don't like asexual exclusion. And it doesn't really have anything to do with asexual people at all. You notice, have I discussed anything about asexuality in this video yet? No. There are some other reasons, though, that I don't like ace exclusion in particular. And I want to talk about those, too. I, I don't know why, but I have a disproportionate number of friends on the ace spectrum. Even my friends who explicitly identify as asexual, they're not just like, oh, I'm demisexual or gray asexual or sort of somewhere on the ace spectrum. The portion of my friends that identify as asexual is way bigger than the population. I've seen it say, figures that say about like 1%. It's probably 5% or more of my friends. I don't really know why. But I have a lot of asexual friends, and I'm even more on the ace spectrum. And from talking to these people about sexuality, about relationships, things like that, I have gained a tremendous amount of insight because these people don't really understand what it is like to experience sexual attraction, or at least most of them don't. Some people on the spectrum may understand it to some degrees. But because they don't understand this, it forces me to articulate my feelings and experiences in more detail. I have to really think and really work to get the other person to understand what I'm talking about. And this is I find this is actually really helpful to me, because going through that process has helped me to learn 
more things about my sexuality and my gender identity. I think talking to some specific asexual people about this in my life was one of the first insights I had into realizing that the way I experience sexuality is fundamentally different from how most cis men experience sexuality. And I think talking to asexual people made me realize that because I was forced to articulate things in more detail. And lots of people in the LGBTQ community struggle with these things, and so I think asexual people have a unique gift, a unique thing to offer to this community by virtue of not experiencing attraction. Because they don't experience it, they don't have some of the assumptions that most people in mainstream society, including some gay people and trans people, have about sexuality. And without these assumptions, their mind is kind of more of a blank slate, and I think this can result in them being better listeners when it comes to experiences of sexuality that are somehow deviant or queer in some way. This has certainly been my experience, and not just with one or two people, but with a large number of asexual people that I've talked to about this topic. So, when I see the LGBTQ communities that are explicitly trying to exclude ace people from them, I, it seems totally self-defeating to me. I'm like, these people are a gift. They have something to offer you that you won't find anywhere else. Something that you won't find from any other group of people. And I think it's important to really cherish that and appreciate it and include those people not because of helping them, but because they can, they can help you. Um, and I lastly want to talk about some other stuff that enters in the dialogue. I sometimes see people saying, oh, like, asexual people are not oppressed, and that's why they don't belong in the LGBTQ community, because gay people are oppressed and trans people are oppressed. I really don't like this line of reasoning. First of all, I think left-wing ideology and this whole oppression politics can be a bit of a pissing contest. It often leads to really bad places. Second of all, this line of reasoning is often really untrue. Um, people's experiences are really diverse, whether they're gay, trans, uh, asexual, or, or whatever they are. And I've known, I've known a lot of asexual people who have had no experience with oppression or exclusion or being derided because of their lack of sexuality, lack of sexual uh, attraction. But I do know some people who have had difficulties with it, who have been made to feel like they are broken and they have something wrong with them, and who have had people try to convince them that they're not really asexual, like they just haven't found the right person, or they're repressing their sexuality, or, or whatever. So, these experiences can actually be very similar to the experiences of gay and trans people. So, first of all, there's this assumption that's not true for all people. Second of all, some gay people can have it pretty easy in some ways. Like, there's this assumption that, like, gay people are automatically oppressed. Well, if you grow up in a very liberal subculture, your experience is going to be very different from someone growing up in a very homophobic subculture. And sometimes when people are like, oh, like, they're not oppressed enough, the people who are saying these things, I'm thinking to myself, have you even really experienced these things yourself? Because some of them have, but some of them haven't. I feel a little bit uncomfortable with that. I really don't like this idea of, like, measuring people's oppression and using it as the standard to exclude people. So that's what I have to say. Basically, I feel strongly about including asexual people in the LGBTQ community. I do not want to participate in any organization that excludes them. That's how I feel. Yeah, I hope that this has been insightful for you to watch this. If you like what I have to say, I always love when people subscribe to my channel. Thank you!